Improving Cooling System Efficiency, Part 7, How Cooling Towers Work. So we talked a bit about cooling towers and how they work uh, to uh, conserve water. Uh, they certainly are designed as water conservation devices, and they achieve this by their purpose by rejecting waste heat to the atmosphere by both evaporative and sensible heat transfer. And in doing so, this allows the water to be recycled back to the chiller condenser uh, for reuse uh, prior to discharge to drain. Some of the terms that we commonly use for uh, uh, discussing the performance of a cooling tower include the cooling range. And cooling range is simply the difference between the cold water in the tower basin and the warmer cooling tower water being returned back to the tower from the, the chiller. Normally, this is d the design uh, cooling range is uh, 10 degrees, uh, uh, 95 to 85 degree Fahrenheit. Another common uh, term is approach temperature. And we said that a cooling tower is only able to, cannot cool water to below the wet bulb temperature of the outside air. It comes close, but it doesn't quite get to the wet bulb temperature. And how close it gets to wet bulb is referred to as approach temperature, and usually that is 6 to 10 degrees of the wet bulb. Uh, so it's important when you, when you operate a cooling tower to take a look at the temperatures uh, of the cooling tower to make sure that it's performing within its design uh, criteria to make sure that you're getting good um, uh, heat transfer and good heat rejection at the cooling tower as measured by the cooling range and the approach. The colder the water produced by the cooling tower within uh, certain limits, the more efficiently the, the system operates. And for every degree Fahrenheit, uh, you can lower your condenser water temperature. You can achieve up to a 1% improvement in overall efficiency. So you want to keep the condenser water as cold as, as uh, possible within limits. We said it repeatedly that cooling towers accomplish uh, their uh, cooling effect by evaporation. And we can actually calculate how much evaporation is taking place in the cooling tower by using this formula. Uh, what we need to know is the recirculation rate. And most cooling towers, uh, it's about three gallons per minute per rated ton. And we need to know the temperature range, the differential across the cooling tower. And we can also include an evaporative cooling factor, which says that, in, in essence, not all of this cooling that takes place, not all of the, t the temperature differential across the tower is due to evaporative cooling. Some of it is due to sensible heat removal. And uh, in our example, we'll just use 75% as a, as a typical evaporative cooling factor. So you put that all together, uh, one-tenth of 1% 1 of the flow over the cooling tower is evaporated for every degree Fahrenheit uh, of temperature uh, decrease times the evaporative cooling factor. So for our 1,000 ton cooling load example, evaporation would be about 32,400 gallons per day of water from the tower, which um, that's a lot of water in one day. Another term we'll, we'll use repeatedly is cycles of concentration. Uh, the, as water is evaporated from a cooling tower, the water that evaporates is pure. It doesn't contain any of the minerals that are present in the makeup to the cooling tower. And that evaporation process tends to concentrate these impurities. Uh, the more evaporation, the more concentrated the impurities become. And we need to have a measure for how concentrated the, the cooling water is becoming as this evaporation takes place. We do that by expressing it as cycles of concentration. And in our example, we can take the, the conductivity of the water. In this case, our example says, let's say we have 1,000 micromoles conductivity of the cooling water, and our makeup is 250. We can calculate that then as four cycles of concentration. Another option 
if we our tower is equipped with uh, makeup and bleed water meters, we can actually calculate cycles by taking the ratio between the makeup volume and the bleed volume. So by recording the water uh, consumption data for makeup and bleed, it's an easy calculation to uh, arrive at cycles. And these two numbers should be fairly close to one another. So bleed is another uh, uh, criteria that we need to allow for when we operate a cooling tower. Um, what bleed does is it, it allows us to control the cycles of concentration. Uh, if we didn't have any bleed on the cooling tower, as water is evaporated from the cooling tower, it, it would tend to over concentrate the minerals that are present in the makeup and eventually lead to scale deposits and fouling of the not only the cooling tower media, but uh, the condenser of the chiller as well. So we do have to send some water to drain, and this uh, bleed can be estimated based on what we want to accomplish in terms of limiting our cycles of concentration. So bleed equals the evaporation rate divided by the cycles of concentration minus one. So in our example of the 1,000 ton cooling tower, bleed 22 and a half gallons per minute, four minus one is three, so our bleed rate is seven and a half gallons a minute or 10,800 gallons per day if we want to keep the cycles of concentration at full. And um, so we can set our bleed rate to, to achieve that uh, target of four cycles if that's what's right for that cooling tower. Now makeup, uh, is the amount of water that is added to the cooling tower to replace that loss by evaporation, bleed, and windage. Uh, windage is the effect of the air flowing through the water that may blow some of the uh, uh, water out of the cooling tower. So if the airflow is uh, too great through the tower, it can tend to blow water droplets out of the tower, which adds to the uh, uh, the bleed in essence, but most towers are designed to operate very efficiently and the windage losses are normally considered negligible. So for practical purposes, we generally estimate makeup as just evaporation losses plus bleed losses. And uh, in our example again of the 1,000 ton tower, 22 and a half gallons per minute uh, evaporation, seven and a half gallons per minute of bleed, 30 gallons per minute total, or 43,200 gallons per day of makeup required uh, at four cycles of concentration. So here we, we kind of state things in a little different way. Uh, uh, makeup equals evaporation plus bleed. We know that bleed equals evaporation over cycles of concentration minus one. So we can also express uh, the makeup uh, simply in terms of our calculated evaporation and our desired cycles of concentration to estimate what our makeup demand would be in that cooling tower at any given cycles of concentration that we, that, uh, we target for that particular cooling tower. <clears throat> 